Hello friends welcome to the truth of God Jesus Christ is Lord channel. Here is another reaction video with Pastor Gino Jennings. We believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and he is the creator of heaven and earth according to the scriptures. This channel is for educational purposes only. Let's watch and learn together. Pastor Dennis, but, but I didn't write 
this stuff. The problem is preachers have allowed it to happen for so many years. Because the false church I was came, that I came up in, my mother was a teacher. Man, my mother was a loud son. She would get up and rebuke the whole church. There's a bunch of men in there. She'd be walking around, what's the matter with y'all? Oh, don't so and so and so. And this was my mother. You know? So, my former pastor, he didn't believe in women preachers. But yet, he had my mother up with the Bible teaching what people call Sunday school. Supposed to be and all that stuff. I think I may have been about 15. And I'll never forget it. I went up and knocked on my bishop's office door. He said, Yeah. I said, It's Brother Gino. Come on in, brother. I asked him, Why you got my mom up here? I said, You taught from the Bible. I suffer not a woman to teach from the use of authority of the man. Why is she teaching Sunday school? He said, Oh, the women can teach Sunday school. I said, According to, I was 15. I said, According to the second chapter of the book of Titus, the aged women are supposed to teach the young women and the itemize it. And I said, At that time, my mother wasn't in her 60s, 70s, and 80s. She was about in her 50s. I said, She's not even a mother. She's my mother naturally. But spiritually, she's still a sister by age. And when he saw he couldn't wiggle and tell me anything and get away with it, he said, Well, well who put her up there anyway? I said, you did? <laughs> and besides him and me, it was wrong. He just stopped the whole Sunday school session. I cannot go beyond Lord. the word Lord. of the Lord. Lord. Preachers that say women can preach, yes. all of them are lies. Oh, Not some of them. All of them. Oh, yes, mother. Yes, sir. Because I was in a church for Pentecostal church for um, all the twenty years. And when I hear about women, when I preach about the women um, preaching, you know, I walk out of my church. Right now I'm not at church to go to because I'm out of it, you know. Well, you're at home, mother. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So out of it, I'm still looking, you know, um, one of your church to go to, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. The one question I want to ask you, sir, is um, the, the matter about the hair, the false hair. Yeah. When there is um, some people who want thyroid, and they hear peel off, mm -hmm. um, radiotherapy, um, radio, um, you know, radiation, yes. They peel the hair, head off, hair off, mm -hmm. the woman head bald. Mm -hmm. Is it all right to go around without, you know, putting on something in here, like the hair is a beautiful woman? I know it's false here, but it, uh, it's like, oh, you have a false kid, false false. Let, let me tell you what she should wear. 11th chapter, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Let me tell you what she should put on her hair. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Yes. I'm going to start at verse 5. Yes. And every woman that prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head. She should have her head covered, not by some hair. Cover her head. The Bible said, for this cause, for all, that, listen at this. For that is even all one as if she were shaved. Yes. And if a woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. Yes. But if it be a shame for women to be shorn and shaven, verse 6. Notice. Let her be covered. The Bible, the Bible is itemizing what you're talking about. If she's shaven, if she don't have no hair, the book says let her be covered. Let her be covered. But now it's going to itemize what she should cover it with because it represents power. Now at verse 10. All right. For this cause. For this reason. Ought the woman to have power on her head. Because of who? Because of the angels. Mm. So if a woman hair fall out by radiation, the Bible teach the woman to have her hair covered Cover. anyway. Cover. Cover your head. Right. Don't go to, to Rite Aid or Walgreens because the woman's supposed to have her head covered anyway. So if a sickness make her hair come out, cover your head anyway, because by scriptural law, let her be covered. The Bible says what? Let her be covered. The Bible says what? Let her be covered. Not by somebody else's hair. <laughs> Amen. The Bible says, let her be covered. Because if I'm going to get leverage for women to wear wings, then I may as well get leverage for men to wear toupees. 
So the Bible tells her to begin with. Amen. Let her. Let her be covered. For this cause. For this cause of the woman to have power on her head. You see, when she have her head covered, it symbolizes power because of what? Because of the angels. The doctrine of the apostles is already in force having your head covered. Oh, really? So you don't have to buy somebody else's hair to do it. It already enforces of having your head covered. All right, a few more questions, then I'm going to quit. Someone I didn't get. Anyone? Someone I didn't get. Yes, sir. Hello, Pastor. God bless you, sir. Um, the thing about you talking about um, women not being able to speak in church. Yes, sir. In the apostolic church, we say that. From the apostolic. I used to be too. Yeah. And they say that all is because of the, the, the women in Corinth were so rude and so. I heard that explanation for years. That's been explained for years, and you know, we have missionaries and evangelists and all sorts. So that excuse, and they try to say, well, it says it you know, because they're so rude. And it, it, it only meant them and not everybody else. Jesus said, what I say to one, I say to who? Really? If it was only talking to them, well, then somebody can bring the argument and say that, uh, because, let me make an example. You ever heard of the Church of Christ who don't believe in speaking in tongues? The Church of Christ says, on the day of Pentecost, it was only for the apostles to speak in tongues. It's not for everybody. So that argument that the so-called apostolics have brought is just a lie. I heard it too. And I've challenged all of them, and all of them, all of them failed the challenge. The women in the Bible, God set structure in the church for men, women, boys, and girls. And they try to make an excuse and say, well, the women was unruly. Well, the men was unruly. The Bible says there's many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers. You'll find that in the first chapter of the book of Titus, especially if they are the circumcision whose mouths must be stopped. Who subvert whole housing, teaching things which they ought not for money. So, that excuse that the so called apostolics have made, and they say, well, the women in Corinth was unruly. Women and men in Corinth, and all down through the Bible, was unruly. Oh, yeah. But they can't try to make that as an excuse to justify them. So, I challenge all the bishops, all the elders, all the pastors, all the evangelists. Just show me one woman in the Bible that the apostles ordained. Because if you're doing all this ordaining women, that's what the men are doing, then they should be able to go to the Bible and show example or precept where any apostle lay hands on a woman and ordained her what these men ordaining women to be today. If a woman is an assistant pastor, get one now. If a woman is an apostle, get one in here. If a woman is a deaconess, like Mother Carnell was talking about, get one here. Listen, never approach the Bible with your personal feelings because it's dangerous. You'll say, you may call the Bible wrong. See, men, some of you may say, well, Pastor, you think I don't agree with you. Hold it. Run slow before you say that. Because I'm not saying nothing. If you get an electric bill from the mailman, and you open it outside, it's five hundred dollars. You may tell him, "I don't agree with you, sir." <laughs> He's gonna tell you, "Don't look get upset with me. I'm just a mailman. All I am is your friendly neighborhood mailman. Right. Come and bring you God's everlasting word that I did not write." Everybody must repent of their sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you've been baptized, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, you're not baptized. You must get baptized over. Come out of the church you in. Leave it. You hear me tell you over the social media. Come out of the church. Leave these fake, fraudulent churches that are lying to you. All right, a few more questions quickly. Let me get the brother in the back. Yes, sir. Uh, quite quickly, in a, ahead, from um, in Galatians 5.19, it yeah. says the works of the flesh. And in verse 20, I believe it mentions emulation, but I've not actually been able to kind of, kind of actually define what emulation is with regard to the script. Man, you got an iPhone, why don't you go Google? Emulation. But, but I, I, was thinking, I was wondering if, if that, is that, um, Towards uh, like doctrines alone, or is, is it like what? 
is that like when men make up their own doctrines, kind of like what we're talking about now, or is that like just use or misuse of scripture altogether? No, it's not necessarily misuse of scripture, because all the scriptures itemizing there in the 19th chapter, or rather the 5th chapter book of uh, Galatians, it's dealing with the works of the flesh. That's all. And the works of the flesh fulfill all that. Emulations, lie, lust, fornication, adultery, hatred, variance, all that. That's all that's dealing with is the conduct of man and woman. And that conduct is past, present, and future, and will be until the Lord comes. When the Lord comes, he'll stop all of it, because the rest of the flesh will come to an end. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. Comment below, like, share, and subscribe. See you soon. Hope you guys learned something from this. God bless you.